Matthew Spoza, thank you so much for all your time today. Thank you for inviting me to the interview. You were such an ANC man. I mean, I presume you're still with the ANC. Still, definitely. Um, through and through. But yet it doesn't look or feel quite the same ANC from 94, maybe until quite recently. What, what do you think happened or what changed? Let's accept that a lot changed. Not only leadership, but even style of leadership, even approach on what are the essential policies of the ANC. The ANC stands for a non social organization and society. Are we, are we, do we live to that? Do we have comrades making mistakes and uttering things which could be divisive? Yes, we do. We don't need that. Do we, do, does the ANC tolerate corruption? No, but there's a lot of corruption. It has become systemic in, in, in municipal government, in provincial government, in national government. Corruption is systemic. And what do we do? Instead of t hitting the corruption at the heart, we protect one another. We, pro we introduce a culture of immunity and impunity. And it's wrong for the NC to do that. Take the issue of Nkandla. The issue of Nkandla is scandalous. From any angle you look at it, it's scandalous. It's a, the court pronounced themselves in the strongest possible terms against the president, failure to protect the constitution, to respect the institution of constitution like public protector. The parliament's failure to act responsibly in that situation and do the right things. Now, when such pronouncements are being made against the ANC, you ask yourself, what happened to the ANC? That's when you start asking those questions. Where is that ANC? Which, which never found itself at fault in that manner. We, we are afraid to set examples at the highest level. And I think we should, we should have said to the president, we know the court of law, but you should now accept that you have made fundamental errors. I mean, you know the president well from yes, Mozambique, I yes. and, and, I, and I assume it must be terribly difficult for you now, you know, to have to say these things and, and, and to say, look, you know, I think you need to go. Why, why isn't the president going? I don't know why he's not going. And let me tell you now, I'm not going to change my position. I believe strongly that the president must go. I don't, I don't think that numbers make an argument. That's not how I was brought up. It's, it's merit which makes an argument. You can be 1,000 and say you must stay. I could be one and say you must go, and I'd be the only one who's right. And he still has proved that. So I feel very much in a big crowd saying you must go. I don't feel lonely. You can repeat a hundred times that the branches say he must, he's forgiven. I cannot accept that. There's now a narrative that I, that I hear, maybe more up north than I'm hearing it down in the Western Cape, but people saying increasingly that Kudesa, the constitution and so on, it was a sellout um, and that it's very un-African. How do you respond to that? I think they speak in the comfort of today, not understanding the discomfort of yesterday, the delicate situation in which we had to handle. It was very delicate. Uh, more people were being killed at the time we were negotiating. We could not afford recklessness or the little racial argument you hear today where people can comfortably just throw them around and divert our attention from the big picture. They, 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 they're enjoying the freedom, so they can say any nonsense they want to say. And of course, they are welcome to say those nonsense. It's a free democratic society. But it's because they don't understand. Can I also ask you about the EFF, but specifically Malema? You, I know you defended him in well, the, in the, in, yeah, in the yes. internal ANC yes. disciplinary committee. Yes. Do you think the ANC made a mistake by throwing him out? A big mistake. I've always said so, even that time, because you see, and I've said it on <laughs> various platforms, when a political problem arises, you don't become legalistic. You must solve it politically and find, identify areas of differences and have political solutions. There are always areas of solutions. Now, when we a youth league come from a conference, our responsibility is to listen to the resolutions and say, guys, the ANC won't support this resolution, it will support that. Go and argue this in the next conference if you want to argue it, but we, we don't, at the moment, think it's policy. And go to the conference with those uh, agreements and disagreements and let them win uh, uh, in the conference or lose. Then they, we're all bound by the decisions. We didn't do that. We didn't even want to listen to the resolutions. We wanted to settle scores with Malema. And I said at the time, there is no dustbin for comrades. There isn't. We need to educate. And, and now this is coming back to horn all of us. That in fact, from that, those dustbins, come fat rats which will come and bite you. And today, he is biting us. 